Magandang hapon po, Malacanang Press Corps. Kasama po natin ngayong hapon si Press Secretary Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles, Philippine Charities 56 Office General Manager Mel Robles, at PhilHealth Spokesperson Dr. Shirley Gigi Domingo. Good afternoon, sir. Magandang tanghali, Malacanang Press Corps. Uh, dalawa mahalagang ahensya sa pagbangon natin galing sa pandemya, Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office at saka ang PhilHealth. May mahalaga po silang announcement ngayong araw na ito na makakatulong dito sa ating economic recovery. Uh, Boss Mel? Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, today, uh, the Philippine Charity Sweepstakes Office is going to remit its share to the national government, national treasury in fact, and uh, which will uh, give the Philippine, uh, the field health, no? more funds to support the universal health care law. Uh, this is just the first among uh, the remittances that we will do because under the law, 40% of our charity uh, fund will have to go to the universal health care. <laughs> Ay, by the way, I forgot. The most important thing, it's uh, 2.5 billion, uh, 2.5 billion pesos to uh, help finance the universal health care. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this is over and above the taxes that we pay. Huh? Mm -hmm. So apart from the taxes that we the, give to the Department of Finance, we still have to give this, uh, the charity fund, from our charity fund, 2.5 billion. Ilan ang taxes? May idea kayo, Boss Mel, ilan ang taxes na binabayaran? Pero you have income, you have VAT, yeah. and We have all the taxes, taxes including documentary doc taxes. Mm. Yeah. So on top of that, meron tayong more than 2 billion na nire-remit sa universal health care through PhilHealth. Madam? Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us here. Uh, in behalf of our OIC President, Attorney Eli Santos, who is now in uh, Congress for a budget hearing, uh, we are very happy to be the recipient of these uh, funds from uh, PCSO. Uh, we have lined up several uh, benefits uh, for, uh, for the use of these funds. Uh, these funds will be transmitted to the Treasury and will be remitted to PhilHealth uh, through the a national subsidy for for uh, benefit uh, improvement. So it's a different uh, subsidy from the usual uh, GAA subsidy to fill health for the premiums of indirect uh, contributors. This fund is uh, specifically for benefit improvement and will not in any way be used for any admin expense. So we're very happy uh, that we will be receiving these funds because it will translate to better financial protection of all our members. Thank you. May katanungan po ba kayo sa ating dalawang ahensya? Eden Santos, Net 25. Hello. Good afternoon po. Sa PhilHealth po, uh, yung po bang uh, 2.5 billion pesos ay uh, gagamitin doon sa mga uh, hindi pa nababayarang mga uh, COVID uh, expenses po ng mga pasyente way back before pa? Uh, hindi po. Uh, as we said, the uh, funds from PCSO will be a special fund uh, in the coffers of PhilHealth uh, and it will be used only specifically for uh, benefit improvement. And in fact, we'll be coming out with a medium-term expenditure plan for these funds from PAGCOR and PCSO with, of course, in the co uh, with the coordination and approval also of the two agencies. Ano-ano uh, po mga ben uh, benefits ito na pagkakagastusan po nung uh, 2.5 billion pesos? Uh, some of them are uh, review of our existing case rate para mapataas ang case rate at mas ma-improve yung ating support value. Uh, doon rin sa ating uh, dialysis uh, para uh, ma-increase ang sessions ng dialysis for our uh, dialysis patients. Uh, meron rin tayo mga orthopedic uh, benefits that's planned for that. 
and uh, our Z benefits or yung catastrophic uh, benefits namin. Ire-review po rin natin yun uh, and uh, try to increase the support value also of these conditions. These conditions were identified because uh, most of the assistance that PCSO were giving were in the area of these benefits. And therefore, we agreed to look at all these uh, case rates and Z benefits for so hindi, use of that fund. So, hindi po kasama ang uh, COVID uh, ano dito? Yung mga COVID patients, ganyan. We're, we are paying for COVID uh, benefits through our existing funds. Thank you po. Salamat din po. Next question, uh, Ms. Evelyn Quiroz. For GM Robles, first time po itong 2.5 billion na remittance nyo since umupo po kayo sa PCSO. Yeah, this is the first time under my watch. So ito po ba yung 2.5 is part of the remittance po ng mga STL operators, yung mga franchise holders natin sa buong Pilipinas? Yes, combined na ito with the LOTO and the uh, STL funds, uh, we have a charity fund. May ha mayroon kasi ano eh, uh, allocation from the, all the, from the gross income. You have about 35% to charity. And from there, 40% uh, of that goes to the universal health care law. So ito pong fund na ito, uh, since na-mention nyo from STL operations, meron po ba kayong report na natanggap na may mga STL franchise holders po na hindi pa nakakapag-operate sa bansa? Oh yeah, meron. Meron yan. It's a normal occurrences. So ano po yung uh, directiva dito ng PCSO? Para kasi po kung, kung legal po yung franchise holders sila, makakapag-operate po sila at the same time, maririmit po nila yung inaasahan nating remittance. Medyo mahabang kwento lang, no? but uh, the short and long of it, if you apply for a uh, STL franchise, uh, you give a feasibility study, and uh, we assume, we presume that the applicant can operate. So, you uh, upon given the uh, permit to operate, uh, we will give you a certain number of days uh, for you to, to, to operate and remit. Pag hindi, then it shows na hindi ka ready and you are not uh, qualified to be an agent. Actually, we call them agents. Thank you, sir. Next question, Vance Fernandez, please tonight. Being in the PCSO, sir, have you looked on this uh, mga illegal STL? or mga hueteng na illegal under your watch now? Yeah, uh, but uh, I will answer this first. If you could direct also your question, Sana, on the assistance, okay. ano? because this is answer really, is. but yes, I will answer this, yes. yes. We have, a, uh, it is a fact that we have a lot of uh, uh, illegal operations and we're doing our best to contain them because yes they directly affect our contribution to the universal uh, universal health care uh, but uh, rest assured we are working because we don't have police powers but we are using uh, uh, a lot of persuasion and legal uh, moves to to curtail the uh, operations of the illegal wetting among them yung Bukis, merong uh, peryahan ng bayan, no? The lot. Alam nyo naman sa Pilipinas, kahit basketball, tinatayaan eh. So there is a proliferation and we are doing our best to to have this uh, prevented para naman yung legal, uh, the legal uh, STL, which is paying their, uh, who are paying their taxes and in fact contributing to the coffers of the field health uh, can uh, can operate and proliferate. Mm. Sir, uh, on another issue, sabi niyo yung mga assistance, uh, have you looked on this, ano, yung mga medical assistance and financial assistance you have given? Mga ilan na po to, How much? I don't have the figures now, but I will tell you they have been reduced dramatically because of the imposition of, uh, for example, dog stamps, no? Uh, just for uh, in context, uh, prior to 2018 or uh, 2019, our budget for charity is nine billion. 
No? Now, our budget for the whole year is only 900 million. No? So it has dropped uh, dramatically. It is now uh, one tenth, including uh, uh, what we give. No? Uh, kaya yung tiran lang sign for charity uh, is uh, less than a billion. Sir, uh, may mga nagdareklamo, sir, sa mga online kasi they're asking for some medical uh, assistance. Uh, pwede silang, let's say, pumunta uh, personal sa inyong office? Yeah, they can email me because right now talagang dinidiscourage natin yung face-to-face, yung, face -to -face, yung pila. And then they can complain. And yes, they have a lot of reason to complain because they use, we used to give as high as 200,000, even 500,000 during the times that wala pa kami taxes. Now, uh, you'll be lucky to get 50,000. 20 to 50 yung maximum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. No more questions? Ah. Relevant questions, please. Topel Pelayo of DWA. Um, sir, nabanggit po ninyo na 900 billion na lang po, a uh, million yung uh, fund na lang po for charity. Bakit po bum bumaba, sir, from 9 billion? Well, as I've said, we have the uh, taxes that uh, weren't there before. You know? uh, yung documentary stamps, uh, VAT. No? Uh, we have the earmarking, malasakit, also the universal health care law. No? Although they're the same, pareho naman ang ginagawa nila. Yung mga like National Book Development Board, things that have nothing to do with our mandate, Naka-automatic earmarking po sa amin yun. May sports din. So, we're working on it though para yung wala namang relationship po sa charity ay matanggal, no? Because sa laki ho na nawawala na sa amin for uh, uh, the taxes that we pay. So, not only do we give charity, we also are a revenue generation for the government. Okay, thank you. And now we will proceed to the handing over of the 2.5 billion check. PCO to Phil Hill. Taas na lang. Hindi makita. Sige. Taas na lang. Okay. Thank you po, P PCSO General Manager Mel Robles at sa ating pong, uh, PhilHealth spokesperson, Dr. Shirley Gigi Domingo. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we will proceed to uh, Press Secretary Trixie Angeles for some announcements. Secretary? Magandang tanghali uli. Happy birthday. Okay, boss. Bukas na. Okay. Uh, naglabas po tayo today ng executive order number three. Allowing voluntary wearing of face masks in outdoor settings and reiterating the continued implementation of minimum public health standards during the state of public health emergency relating to the COVID-19 pandemic. So ito na po yung ina-announce ng DOH ng voluntary wearing of face masks outdoors in non-crowded places uh, provided kung kayo ay immunocompromised, seniors or hindi kumpleto ang bakuna, kailangan pa rin po mag-face mask or strongly encourage ang face masks. Okay? Basahin ko na lang po Precisely in provision, the voluntary wearing of face masks in open spaces and non-crowded outdoor areas with good ventilation is hereby allowed provided that not fully vaccinated individuals, senior citizens, and immunocompromised individuals 
are highly encouraged to wear their masks and physical distancing will be observed at all times. So, meron pa rin tayong physical uh, distancing. Face masks shall continue to be worn in indoor, private, or public establishments, including in public transportation, by land, air, or sea, and in outdoor settings where physical distancing cannot be maintained. Tuloy pa rin po ang other minimum public health standards intended to effectively prevent and minimize the spread of COVID-19 in the country. It shall continue to be implemented consistent with the principles of shared accountability, evidence-based decision-making, socioeconomic equity, and rights-based approach. In this regard, the DOH is directed to update the MPHS guidelines with the issuance of this order. Okay. In addition to that, um, we're happy to announce that we are 6% away from the wall of immunity. That's why we're malakas na loob natin for face masks. Now, congruent to that as well, the state of calamity is extended for possibly three months, but only for the purpose of preserving the, the benefits under it, such as, but not limited to, the indemnification, the, hold on, para mas precise tayo. Okay, here we go. Indemnification, emergency procurement, uh, special risk allowance for healthcare workers. We will transition out of the state of calamity uh, after further review. So, good news all around. Okay, on the next topic, nagkaroon tayo ng cabinet meeting today. And we discussed primarily food security. We we're identifying the factors that uh, hinder our food security. And several agencies were there to report, among them the DOTR, NEDA, uh, of course, the Department of Agriculture, the DILG, and yeah, among others. So uh, those that were identified for possible uh, policy review and legislation are the uh, barriers to efficient transportation, red tape, um, Yung permit systems natin to make it more efficient. Uh, also, the crossing of boundaries between LGUs. In addition to which, we're also looking at a review of policy and possible legislation to balance importation with local production and to address the issues of over and under production. So, uh, uh, all the departments made their reports today, there are quite many overlaps. So all departments will be working together on the policy review, assessment review, and proposals. Okay, questions? Questions? Hi, ma'am. Magandang hapon po. Ma'am, just a clarification on the face mask EO. When will it be implemented? It's uh, immediately. Hold on. Let me just get you the precise term. This order shall take effect immediately upon its publication in the OG or newspaper of general circulation. Nasa OG na po siya. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, um, what made the president uh, approve the recommendation for the voluntary wearing of uh, face mask? He had imposed the condition. And one of that is the establishment of the wall of immunity. Since we are 6% away from that, then uh, it's time. So we're doing this in stages, in phases, so that we also don't, you know, so that we can have feedback on whether or not these new policies are working and how to make them more efficient so that hopefully by the end of the year, we might be able to have uh, to be 
voluntarily mask indoors as well. <laughs> Last na lang po. Um, naging consideration din po mm -hmm. ba yung Burmans na kasi baka mamaya madam, mas dumami yung mga taong nasa labas? That's why we're doing this in stages. Mm -hmm. We'll need the feedback if uh, the voluntary masks outdoors is going to contribute to something, then of course the policy will again be reviewed. Right. Questions? Secretary, kasi merong conditions na sinet yung EO, mm -hmm. there should be good ventilation. So, yes. who will set the standards? Who determines what what is a good ventilation? Meron bang mga ganong mga rules na iseset? Uh, we assume so because uh, there is some discretion of the local governments to establish minimum standards for the imposition. Uh, however, um, in general, what does uh, good ventilation mean? May opportunities, for instance, na uh, crowded. So even if it is outdoors, hindi good ventilation yon, and you're in each other's faces. So uh, without the possibility of social distancing, then this would be considered also as part of not of the requirement. Because the requirement there must be it shouldn't be too crowded. So there are also instances now you would consider outdoors. What do we consider as outdoors? In some instances, you consider outdoors okay lang roof, pero walang walls. Okay. In other instances, some people place the, like for example, under the no smoking law, in some instances, pagka sinabi mong outdoors, kailangan walang bubong. So it will be determined. Uh, no, normally, things like these are determined by the local government kasi sila po ang enforcement in these instances. So the local government will play a key role in, 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 in implementing this executive order, especially with standards sa mga spaces na ganun. Uh, That's usually the case. In, in, even in, the, uh, in all of the laws or legislation that we created pursuant to COVID, it was always the local government that has set the standards, except for those benefits that were given by the national agencies. Ah, pero so, do you see the need for a unified standard? Kasi baka mamaya yung isa isang lugar, I agree. yung outdoor nila iba. So do you that's think why? kailangan mm -hmm. po ng national government na Well, let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason we're doing it in phases, so that we have a feedback mechanism. We continue to listen to the people what the needs are, and particularly also to understand that local needs also differ. So we have to balance the creation of a uniform standard with the needs of the locals. Salamat, Sek. Thank you, Ace. Uh, next, uh, Pia Gutierrez, ABS-CBN. Ay, ma'am. Ma'am, can we clarify doon sa EO? Kasi nabanggit po ni uh, Yusek Verjere kanina doon sa Congress that uh, they agreed to make masking... Uh, to be optional only for those who are non-vulnerable. That's uh, what it says here. Who are vulnerable? Senior citizens, immunocompromised, those with no complete immunization. So, ibig sabihin, mm -hmm. ma'am, it's still mandatory for them to wear masks. Uh, the executive order says highly encouraged. So, it will be, well, that's what it says there. So, I think we may have to work that out with the USEC. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, then, Ma'am, regarding yun lang po dun sa UN General Assembly na dadalhon ni PBBM this September, ano na po yung ginagawang paghahanda ng uh, Pangulo regarding this? And syempre tomorrow ay birthday po niya. Meron bang plano ang ating Pangulo for his birthday? I-announce po namin later on. With regard to the clip, there will be a special briefing for that one. Uh, possibly, I think Thursday, no? before we leave. So, uh, as for his birthday celebration, simply mahirap mag discuss. Kahit yung meron bang party, any special gathering po dito sa Malacanang? I have no instructions to <laughs> announce anything. Kayo na ba? <laughs> Minsan sensitive yung mga ganyan. No, wait, ha? let's just clarify. Baka may mag-ano na naman sa akin. 
Um, no, I have no information as to uh, whether or not there's going to be a birthday celebration. However, we can safely assume that the president is going to market. That's the official statement. <laughs> going to ma market. Uh, remember it. <laughs> it's like, okay, when I have a birthday, yay, happy birthday to me. <laughs> Sometimes we have, you know, we have cake. All right, so how it's going to, going, going to be celebrated will be a matter to announce at a later date. Okay, uh, Anna, Felicia, Jamie, Jamie News Online. Good afternoon, ma'am. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Yes, uh, ma reaction lang po ng palace regarding the call of Human Rights Watch for uh, UNHRC member states to adopt a strong resolution kasi they express concern po na EJK still continue under the Marcos administration. Any comment lang po from palace? None. No comment, no reaction. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, Kat Domingo, ABS event. Ma'am, on the cabinet meeting, um, were there specific crops or kinds of meat or fish that the government will prioritize? I know we're looking at food security in general. So, of course, while there's certain uh, things, certain crops that were discussed, such as but not limited to rice, uh, we're looking at you know things that cross uh, the what kind of crops we're looking at. It's not just even crops. We talked about uh, pork, we talked about fish, rice, vegetables in general. So there are several proposals, many of which we'll be happy to announce at a later date once we have all of the details. But the recognition of the problem is step one, as well as the proposals by our various cabinet officials regarding policy review and legislation. So these are going, what we're going to set either, if it's for legislation, the priority legislation, and if we're going to look at uh, policies that, can, that do not require uh, legislation, we're going to do that immediately. Uh, we just need all of the, the various agencies just need to work out the standards between themselves. Okay, last question uh, from Dennis Hamito Bomborajo. Hi, ma'am. Uh, may nakaschedule po ba na courtesy call yung si uh, Miss Alex Iala after winning the U.S. Open uh, Youth uh, kay President uh, BBM? May coordination na po ba? Um, wala pa po tayong information on that. She's not a resident. So we have to... If, if there was an opportunity, I'm sure the President would love to have her over... But uh, let's see. Let's see. We, we, we don't have any details or if she even has time. So let's find out first. Okay. Sec, sec. sec follow up lang. Yes. Sorry, Ivan follow Marina. up po dun sa question ni Kat. May progress report po ba ang uh, cabinet secretary specifically from the, or the officials of the DA tungkol dun sa ilang mga bagay na, ilang mga crops or products na may kakulangan tayo previously? Sugar, white onions, uh, Salt, for example. Meron po ba tayong, uh, are we making progress in those, uh, in those particular areas? Well, the DA has never been remiss in bringing out the information. You really should check out their website. Tuloy tuloy yung pagbibigay nila on those ongoing programs. Today's cabinet meeting was primarily to address the issues of uh, the efficiency of our, uh, for instance, transport of food, getting from the farm to the market, balancing our imports with local production, and so on. So in relation to very particular uh, crops such as, but not limited to sugar, uh, these are already, con we have constant updates from the DA. So we just need to check out their website. Magaling yung spokes nila. Okay, maraming salamat po. Press Secretary Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles. Maraming salamat malaking niyang press corps.